exclusively on the Business Outlaws Network. I think most important a piece of advice to young designers, kids in design school who want to be designers, whether it's graphic designer, interior designer, industrial designer, as our world is evolving and everybody's getting upset and worried about being replaced by AI. I believe that if you are good at conceptual thinking and you can get paid for your ideas, and you know, whether it's freelance or working at a company or whatever, if you, if you are valued for the way you think think and for what you come up with as a result of that thinking they cannot replace you with a machine the business of laws you know that we win it you know that we win we fight for the cause we fight for the cause a circle of winners a circle of winners we're business of laws we're business of laws you know that we win it we fight for the cause a circle of winners we're business of laws Welcome, Outlaws, to the big show. We have a very exciting guest for you. Yes, we do. Today, the famous Chip Kid. How are you doing, Chip? I'm all right. Yes. <laughs> really, you need no introduction because everybody has seen your work at one time or another, but they might not know that they've seen your work, right? Yeah. Is it, is it, um, that's a good question to start off with. Is it fun to be somebody so influential who isn't a household name? Like, do you get recognized on the street? People come up and they're like, well, I'll, uh, every, every now and then, it, well, I did, I did Ted uh, talks. I did Ted talks. Yeah, so I, I did two Ted talks. Um, one was in 2012 and the other, I think was like four years later, three years later. Um, and, and people have really enjoyed them. And so as a result of those, like, like in airports and like on the subway in New York, somebody will say, Hey, is that, is that you? Do you, do you like that? I I don't not like it. I think it's, I think it's amazing. You know, it's like, who the hell am I? Who gives a shit? (laughs) (laughs) That's fun. People are really sweet. No. Well, we're, we're really, really excited to, um, to be able to, you know, pick your brain and get your wisdom and insight. Kind of the the concept of this show and how Mike and I came up with it is we were we were talking in his backyard and we just come from an event that we'd paid a lot of money to be at. Mm-hmm. And we were really frustrated because we felt like the people weren't telling us the truth. Like they they were telling us what they wanted to tell us to sell us but they weren't telling us the real truth about success and business and, and they were kind of holding back. And Mike and I knew there was another layer that they weren't really, you know, us they were manipulating us. They, they weren't telling us. And I said, you know, it'd be fun if we did a show where we went back and like we gave advice to the 24 year old us. Like if you could go back in time and talk to yourself when you were 24, what is it you would say? So down the road in the show, I'm going to ask you that question, not okay. now, but that's the premise of the show is we, we try not to pull any punches and really tell people, you know, not the idealized version of how things work, not the fluffy, you know, sexy version, but, you know, business and art and everything's hard work. <laughs> Nothing comes easy. Nobody gets lucky. And even if you do get lucky, it's hard to keep it. <laughs> if yeah, you well, are, that, that's a good point. Oh. Yeah. And so, um, but on the outside, it looks easy. You know, people looking in from the outside think, think it's easy. The so, market were too professional. Yeah. Okay. And so our, our journey with you, because Mike and I are huge fans, is we, we had your books. Yes. Okay. And we would encourage everybody, especially the coffee table books, to go get those and order those right away. They're, they're fascinating the way they're laid out and just understanding kind of how chip approaches them i learned a lot from those books and it felt like you spent a lot of time on them (laughs) well yeah frankly uh 30 years if you think about it because i because they there's the the two of them collect my work from the beginning of when i was doing it up to basically now so um it starts in 1986 when i first got here uh hired at Knopf publishing and I'm still there. I'll be there 33 years in October. 
Yeah, it's Listen. it's fascinating the story and the in the Should inspiration we kind of tell, and everything. Tell the audience what Chip does, maybe. Yeah, oh, yep. he, he does. <laughs> not well, to know. He does book covers. <laughs> yes, he does. Not just book covers, but some of the, some of the biggest titles that you've uh, you've ever seen, like like Jurassic Park, and there's a bunch of them. Yeah, what are the biggest ones? The best selling ones. The that dog. Done? Well, I think. You, uh, I, I sort of joke, although it's not really a joke. I mean, I'm sure my obituary is going to lead off with, you know, Chip Kid, age, fill in the blank, uh, best known for creating the dinosaur for the Jurassic Park logo, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, died by crossing the street today uh, <laughs> oh. at the wrong time. Were you hit by a New York cab? Uh, mm, no, probably an Uber. <laughs> um, <laughs> hmm. Uh, I think most recently I'm probably best known for being the, um, the designer for a, a Japanese novelist named Haruki Murakami, um, who uh, his most recent books were a novel called 1Q84 um, and uh, Catalyst Tsukuro Tezaki and his years of pilgrimage. <laughs> pilgrimage and um, the most recent one was is called Killing Commandante. But I've done a lot of um, nonfiction stuff too. Are those books in, in Japan? That's where they're you did the cover for, for for the Japanese audience. No, for the American. Oh, audience. really? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, he's yeah, and I've been okay. designing for him for twenty three years. Oh wow! What are some of the the best selling ones? So we were talking. You did the Howard Stern. I Miss did, America. I Miss did the second. Yeah, this I designed the second Howard Stern book, Miss America, um, and that's really like designing the entire thing, like the inside. And, and that was quite some time ago. That was, we were designing that the summer of 1995. So I was, I mean, I was using the computer, but I was still like trying to figure out what I was doing. And I remember um, the, uh, we had had the text and he was talking about, um, who's that guy who, who does the gambler song, Kenny Rogers. And I, I forget what the context was. and. And he's like, it was like that, what Kenny Rogers says, you got to know when to hold him, know when to fold him. And then it said, fuck you, Kenny Rogers. And then I highlighted, <laughs> I highlighted that and made it really big and italic. And then I went through the rest of the manuscript and was doing things like that. So visually, it looks like the way he talks, um, which, was, which was really fun. And he was, he was totally into it. So... How big of a difference does the cover make to a book? Well, I think you cover know, art. We're, in the, we're in this sort of curious time, but it's always been a curious time in, in book publishing. Um, it's, it's, oh, it's always changing. You know, I, I love the axiom, nobody knows anything. I truly believe in that um, because, you know, I, I get, you know, certain people in certain departments. Now, I work for Penguin Random House, which is a, a large yeah. co corporate publisher, and, I, and I, I love what they do, and I love what I do. But you, for certain authors, you get a lot of different departments that weigh in on things. And one of the things you hear the most is, this doesn't look big enough. And yeah. I love dispelling the idea of what that even means, because I think... Uh, in, a, in a lot of the cases, especially with Haruki Murakami, it's really about building an audience base over time. That and and I mean, it, you you need a whole kind of team of people to do that. I mean, first of all, he needs to be writing work that is connecting with the public, which it which it is. Um, but then you need a publisher that sort of understands that and and knows how to get his books into into a wider hands of re readership. So if I, if I was to try to make a parallel to it doesn't look big enough, would that be like a band when they're writing a song, writing it for an arena versus like a club or writing it for the radio? Like they're saying it doesn't, when they say it doesn't look big enough, it is an arena rock kind of a thing? I guess so. Oh, it's not a bad, it's not a bad analogy. Um, but it's, you know, also, but what I've been getting now for quite some time is, well, I like this design, but mm -hmm. it's not going to look great when it's a postage stamp size on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Thumbnail. Yeah. And to which 
I sort of say as gracefully as possible. Like, first of all, and, and if, I'm at a, if, I, if I'm at a design school or giving a talk at an art director's club or whatever, I'll take a poll, and we could take the poll in this room if you want, but who has bought a book on Amazon because of the cover? Well, just the art or the words on the cover? Any of it. Yeah, For words on the cover, absolutely I have. You yeah. have sure, yeah. What was it? I can't remember. But if I see an interesting, <laughs> if I see an interesting subhead that that hooks me in, I'll at least pick up the book and I'll look at it, look at the table of contents, and okay. you know, start like that. But on on Amazon. Oh no, on Amazon. I'm saying on oh, Amazon. Sorry, never mind. Never mind. No. No, I'm, no. Talking, I'm talking about on Amazon. Yeah. And so, no. yeah. basically, if and and Amazon is you know good at that. Well, if you liked this, you may like this. But first of all, you can double click on anything and make it big. Yeah, and right. the, so the way that you buy on Amazon, I think, or I buy is I, they suggest the book or I see it in a, a line of books. The first thing I do is look at the rating and then I go read the reviews. Is that normal? I, sure. I yeah. mean, it, any of it's normal, but I just, I think the idea of like the, the, the book cover, which is the book's face, um, is not going to be, you're not going to be reliant on that, especially on Amazon for for the selling basically um it's it's what you're i think or what i'm trying to do is give that book as unique a visual representation as possible and then depending on who the author is and and if they're you know doing like a series of of things um riffing on that now i did not design them but i think a perfect example is malcolm gladwell and what's interesting about those books is, by now, I don't know, there's six or seven of them. Um, a couple months ago, I was in an airport and they had a whole Malcolm Gladwell section. And uh, they're, so they're basically either white or cream field with um, uh, what we call serif type, kind of like tastefully set. And then like with the tipping point, there's a little match there. All right. And then with the other ones, there's a little this or there's a little that. And I looked on the back of each one for the design credit, and they were all designed by different people. But they're <laughs> all basically the same design. And I'm like, okay, all right. But um, that's a total tangent, and I don't know why I went on it. But yeah, but so dude, well, but we're talking about through. Arena Rock and how they don't they don't look big enough. So the trend now in publishing and with publishers is they want the the cover of the book to look big. Well, and I'm as, you know, I'm as guilty of this as anybody else. I mean, that's not exactly subtle, but. No. Yeah, and the, the other book, the second book, what, well, what's interesting, and everybody, you know, I'm sorry if you're listening to this and not watching, is that the, the cover goes all the way across, but the hard cover stops right in the middle, which makes it something that is really unique to hold and something that's really unique on a table to stack. Yeah. Like it, it definitely has a, an effect. Yeah. And it, there's a kind of emotional sense to it, frankly, without like too much TMI, but like this part's limp. Yeah. Right. So, and it's, it makes it easier to kind of like flip through, but it's, it's like this, and this is actually the first one. This is book one. Um, it's sort of like, well, I started and then I kept going. So there's a lot of thought actually put into what you do. Oh yeah. More than most people would, would ever imagine. Yeah. Let's talk about the psychology that you put into a cover. Okay. Every person I've met that's a top of their game in this town understands psychology a, a lot. And the font you use, the pictures you use, how you do it, how much thought, and what's your process for, for doing that? Because what you do is amazing. Well, it all depends on what the book is, and, and I've worked on so many books now, and each book is, is different. Mm -hmm. um, you have to start with who's the author, what are they trying to say, um, and, and take, it, take it from there. You just did a cover for Chris's well, book, yeah, Pet the Dog. My, you know what's funny, though, bro? We're diff you and I are different because... Chip was telling me I'm one of the, I'm maybe the only person that ever called him and asked him to explain the psychology. Well, like we right. were on the phone for like yeah, almost an this hour. This, and I was this, this thing is amazing. Why. I want to show this to the audience here, right? Like this looks like a little puppy dog, right? 
right? No, no, there's way more going on than what you can imagine in, in this. And so you want to like explain some of this because look at the face on the dog. Like, how did you come up with how did you come up with this concept? And and said he looked through almost what thousands of dog pictures. Yeah, I mean, really? yeah. So, but you should explain. So, if I and if I'm getting this wrong or misrepresenting you, you just say. But so, Chris calls me and says I'm doing a, a book on, okay, the lost art of customer service, and it's called Pet the Dog. And you have this this personal story of of you had this beloved dog who was very ill. And you, I'm condensing it, but you, you finally get it to the right doctor that you need to get it to. And he's frankly so cold and impersonal and doesn't even literally pet the dog that's sick. And that affected like your experience, like you didn't want him to, to. Yeah, my ex-wife Satan, when the doctor left the room said that man, right. that man is not touching my baby with a knife. Right. Basically, because she said he he doesn't like dogs because he never acknowledged the dog. He never pet the dog when he was in the room. So there's no way that he could perform surgery on her dog because he doesn't love dogs. And you have to love a dog to perform surgery on a dog in her mind. Now, we know that that's the farthest thing from the truth, but it's it, it resonates. The well, story resonates. But is it the farthest thing from the truth, though? Yeah. I think a, a surgeon doesn't have to love the the people that he's working on to be a great surgeon so well, people oh, people right. confuse logic and emotion and as the same thing a lot of yeah. times and it's not and you gotta separate the two to make a decision but i would say to connect that dot is a lot of businesses and i see this a lot businesses come to me and they're like well it's amazon's fault we're going out of business and it's like no it's not amazon's fault you have you have all the advantage that anybody could have you're just not connecting with customers you're making your product a commodity so if you think you're in the business of just selling books and you don't understand that it's an experience in book clubs and reading and like, right. what's the bookstore on Sunset Book Soup? Book yeah, Soup. Like yeah. that's an example of a bookstore that isn't affected by Amazon, right? Because right? it's yeah. an experience. They're having readings. They're part yeah. of the community. And so the, you know, that's the, the same sort of thing. Is it isn't Amazon's fault businesses are going away. It's the lack of human connection and trying to automate everything and run your business with less people and, you know, less human touch, right? I get, right. I get more of a thank you buying a book on Amazon than I do in person sometimes. Right, which I thought was a really interesting point to make. Um, mo I would say, but I'm, of course, I'm in the New York bubble. Most of the, um, you know, brick and mortar bookstores that I go to there they are very personable and you know and they do know that that's a way to to stay in business whether it's McNally Jackson or the Strand or whatever and you and but most of those are are independently small owned family businesses right well yeah I mean at this point unless you're Barnes and Noble they're they're all are that but Barnes and Noble would be the the first one to say Amazon's putting them out of business because yes. it's you know they're just trying to run it like a big box impersonal you know basically what it comes down to at the end is price or they think it's price so barnes and noble thinks well we got to compete with amazon on price and they're missing the experience the human connection and all that and if it's just about price it's a chase to the bottom and right. somebody can always do it cheaper right yeah and so it's a it's a very vulnerable place to be as a, as a business but that's the spirit the spirit of it yeah back to psychology yeah, sorry. Okay. This, there's a lot, there's a lot going on that. here. Like red, white, and blue you chose. Red, white, and blue, Why? yes. You know, uh, that's not so subtle. No, it's um, not, but it's there. You don't yeah. pay attention to it unless you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah it is red, white, and blue. Yeah, I mean, the, no. that, that color scheme works. I mean, and think about it. You know, it certainly works for the U.S. It works for France. It, you know, yeah. it's a... It's but works, it, it works for Russia but, too. But right. <laughs> but without saying this is some kind of book about America, um, it's just it it's just like a to me it's a pleasing it's a pleasing and I actually really like the um, tagline where you put the tagline by the paw. Well, that yeah, that's and, cute. So, but he said that that draws your eye to it where it yeah. is. Yeah, and and the, and the first thing you do is you look the dog in the, in the eye. And he is. Do you ever see a dog with an expression like this? I never have. It, me neither. And okay. so, so, it, so he's yeah. he he's pretty wary. He doesn't really trust you all that much. Right. Um. So it's almost like pet the dog then becomes a dare, 
as opposed oh. as opposed to a command. Interesting. Um, he's like he's looking at you. Are you sure you want to? Right. Yeah. But you do. But you do want to because you know he's he's cute and cuddly he's, and a puppy. He's adorable and fluffy. Yeah. So you know, yeah. In in the role, getting back to the heart of the psychology is the role of the cover is to get attention, right? Yes. But in fact, my, that's the, the most I can do. Yeah. The most right. I can do is get your attention. And then and, the and then the book has to then has the to book stand has to literally own. sell itself. Yeah, yeah. and it's, the dog on the on this is a little Elvisy, like it's got that Elvis like. It, yeah. it, it does, and and so you're looking for uh, there's a good juxtaposition there because it's a cute, cuddly dog with an attitude like you sure you you want, it. and so that gets your eye, it hooks into your brain, it creates curiosity whether you realize it or not, and next thing you know, you got this book in your hand if it's a store or. You're clicking yeah. on a thing. And that's what we call a mashup of form and content. Okay. So um, form is what something looks like and content is what it says or means. So you have, and this isn't the most original idea in the world, but you have this, you know, cuddly, sweet little puppy who looks like he's really pissed off at you. So that's, you know, the form is, um, is the dog itself. And then the content is... The expression Dis and discontent and this is a big book about discontent with with the way and i feel totally the same about customer service i'm tired of robocalls i'm oh, yeah. tired well that goes without saying but i mean i'm tired of not connecting with a human being yeah. um which is part of why i took this on because i i thought yeah i totally agree with this totally agree with it yeah, we're in a time where the ex expectation of customer service is the highest it's ever been and the fulfillment or execution of it is the worst it's ever been. Yeah. Like there's a huge gap. Um, so how, how what, what did you realize all this stuff actually matters, the font and the way it looks? And when did you have that epiphany? Like, wow, there's a lot more going on in, in what I'm doing than I, I ever imagined because you, you started out as a, a rookie, right? At, I started out as a rookie, but, but I... I went to college and majored sure. in graphic design okay. for four years. I went to Penn State University. And did you start off as graphic design? Yeah. How much of that did they teach you at Penn State? And how much did you a pick lot. up on the job? Oh, really? Well, um, yeah, it was great. It's, and it's still, it's a great school. But again, you know, like I'm of an age. So this was not, I went to college from 1982 to 1986. And it was, the program there was much, much more about ideas than, um, Rules then, then well, there were rules, but the rules were very like broad and sketchy and I'll get into that in a sec But it was um, like today. It's not really an issue but like uh, back then like craftsmanship like all the practical stuff of like I don't know how to do a mechanical I don't know how to you know do you know blah blah blah. It's like it, We don't care like the 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 teachers like you'll learn that on the job that's the, that's the kind of uninteresting stuff. What we want you to do is think about ideas and concepts. So an assignment would be create a poster so that when I look at it, it gets me to either start doing something or stop doing something. Do you try to drive emotion uh, on these? It has Absolutely. an emotional intent on every cover has an emotional intent of some sort. Well, by degrees, yes. By degrees. But yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the E word is very important. Yeah. Um, okay, so you stop doing something or start doing something correct. are two very strong emotions. Now, what is an example and, of that? And isn't that what we're all trying to do? So one of the students... Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to think about that, but yeah. Uh, so, and, uh, and, and, one of the, and the teachers are smart. So they're like, one of our caveats is you can't do a no smoking poster. Like... We, we, we know that. We've seen that. We've seen that, okay? So that's, that's off the table. But one of the students, I'll never forget, it was so, it was so, uh, I don't know, mind-blowing. It was very simple. And again, it's like, it, not that it was the most beautiful poster you ever saw, but she, she said, if you eat this, and she showed a box of Jello. <laughs> Then she said, you eat this. And she showed a shit smeared cow's foot. Oh, wow. And it's like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And she gets up and she's like, do you know what Jello is made out of? Yeah. Cow hooves. I'm <laughs> like, oh my God, no wonder I hate Jello so much. 
But I didn't know that. And, it, it, and ever since, I rarely have to eat jello. But if I, even if I see it, all I can think of are cow hooves or horse hooves or pig hooves. It's like, Ugh. so, yeah. but like, what a cool idea. It is. That's fight or flight, right? Stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's at the core of the psychology, it's the core of Deep in our the amygdala. lowest level. Oh, yeah, on... absolutely. It's a reptilian brain. Yeah. You're, you're pounding on the reptilian brain. That's, a, that's, that's really smart. But what most brands want you to do, of course, is start and to, to use their product. Um, so, you know. So most of your time is spent in the start, not the stop. Right. Oh, one of the other great examples. And, and what's so interesting being in, when you're in the classroom and, and you're with these, what, 20 other kids for a whole year. And so then as the year progresses, you, you start to figure out, well, they're the smart one. They're the not so smart one. Uh, this guy has an airbrush, so all he cares about is airbrushing everything. Blah 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 blah. And so, and there was this one woman who, she was, she always tried really hard, but she just wasn't that talented. But the teacher liked that she tried so hard. But for this, for her poster, she all it said was, "Whatever you do, don't think of elephants." <laughs> that's genius she aced that fucking assignment yeah. and he's like all i can think of right now is elephant everybody in this room yeah. is thinking of an elephant it's like oh man like that's yeah that's powerful that's incredible he's like my dad always used to say that as a joke huh. now what was yours <laughs> I can't remember. It was, it was terrible. I think, w uh, knowing me at the time, it probably had something to do with comic books. Like, you know, start reading detective comics or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another thing. You've done the uh, Batman covers for comic books, right? I've done Batman covers. Yeah. I've, I've written and published a Batman graphic novel. I wrote and published two books that are basically on the history of Batman. Um, there, I did a book on the animated television show called Batman Animated. So yeah, I'm I'm you know big Batman freak. So <laughs> you did, yeah, the reason why we got him is he was at Comic Con. Yes. And so he's um, a a hero there, and you make appearances. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm still stuck on the emotion thing because that kind of blows me away. I never saw it from that side, but it oh, really yes. at the end of the day is is fight or flight. And, in that particular case, and, yeah. and colors have a big part to do with that. Huge, yeah. And fonts. Let's talk and, about that, like fonts. colors and fonts, and it, yeah, it drives I, emotion, or yeah, it's how it makes you feel. At the end of the day, it's how you make something makes you feel, and you stop a buying decision when you uh, kinesthetically internal have a feeling that that's when it stops, and you know it's right for you. There, people yeah. go through a process. Everyone goes through a process of how they determine and make a decision and, and it always ends in, in in kinesthetic internal so you feel good on the inside about that so when i look at artwork and stuff it's always how does it make me feel does it feel make me feel satisfied or i want to buy this product because it makes me feel good just by the packaging i'm a, I'm a packaging freak i yeah. go into stores i look at them and, and i study them yeah no me, me too um and uh, it's funny because because a, a package or for a book cover is very, very different, obviously, than a package for a food uh, item, a food item, or laundry detergent, or you know, hand album soap, cover, hand soap. Album cover gets closer to it, but because what you're you're packaging um, a, a, a narrative, okay, you're packaging a story with books, and whether the story the music is stories, kind of too. Yes, it is, um, but they're 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 told in a different way. Um, and I think the, that there's a kind of visual cachet. I think, I think you're freed up more with album covers. Of course, you know, album covers, like everything else, are not what they used to be. Um, but, you know, sometimes the band's name would be on it, sometimes not. Sometimes there would be no typography on it. Like um, the album cover designer who most influenced me as a graphic designer is a guy named Peter Saddle. Uh, from Factory Records, who's who's still around and still and still working. But uh, uh, when I was in college, there was Joy Division, and then that morphed into New Order. 
and and the, the, I would go to the local vinyl store in the college town in State College, Pennsylvania, and I would see because they because they pioneered the twelve inch single quite a bit. So you, there was a lot of stuff coming through, and that almost never had the the title or the band's name on it ever. Now I you can't really get away with that with the book cover. You really you really need to say this is who the book is by and this is what it's called. I mean, every now and then you can you can try and sidestep that, but it would have to be for an author that is already very well established. Um, but even, I, I doubt Stephen King would not want his name on the front. What's the, wait, wait, what's, wait. The most, what's the most important thing on a cover? Like the single most important thing. We got our listeners out there and they say, hey, some of these people, they don't have the money to afford a chip kit or they got to well, try to make it themselves. Like, what are they, what's the number one thing that they should be well, aware of? Well, I'm going to give them an extremely unsatisfying answer. All right. it's, it's a very broad question, uh, but basically, when I see it, I, you have to make me say, I want to know what that's about. I hey. want to pick it up and I want to see. Provokes curiosity. Because, like, pet the dog could be any of like five things. It could be a novel. It could be a collection of short stories. It could be a, a, a book about how to care for your dog. It could be a book about customer service. Um, but, but whatever the, the, the visual trope is, it should somehow be engaging. And that, that's a very broad thing and it's very intuitive and I think, you know, the longer you're, you're doing this, and if you're doing it right, the more you learn about what has been done and about what's worked really well. You don't want to copy other people's ideas, but you want to try and come up with something that's as equally uh, af affecting. Why, why the uh, period at the end of Pet the Dog? Um, that is a sort of affectation that I use now and then, and, and sometimes publishers don't like it a lot because that is considered, what, what he's referring to is the title of his book is Pet the Dog. I put a period at the end of it um, because I felt that it should be a directive. It should be like it's a sentence. It is somebody said, pet the dog, period. Um, uh, and it, that seemed to make sense to me for what you were doing, uh, as opposed to if it if it was a novel, maybe I would not do that. But I think mm. for your purposes, it seemed to it seemed to work. I didn't put a period after the lost art of customer, customer service. service because it's not a complete sentence, if that makes any sense at all. It's a, it's a fragment that tells you what it is bro. Well, i don't i don't think that a designer out there could focus on just one thing this thing it's so complicated but there's it's so not. much there, there, yeah, there's, but there's, it's not it's but it's not simple. to you because you have 30 very years of, a, of wisdom and experience but to a kid coming up this is a lifetime of experience he makes this well, yeah. look easy no, they, but it's not easy no it's not so it's not easy at would all. you say it's every easy. cover's got to have a hook the hook on that's the dog's eyes. Well, every book has to at. have a hook. And on then the cover. I, and then I have to, but yeah, the cover, the cover needs to, too. And, and, you know, eyes are, you know. That's a big it, hook. Look at this thing. almost cheating. So Mike's pointing at Chip's second book? Yeah. Look at that. That's a big hook. You got an eyeball. <laughs> and that's it. your eye, right, Chip? Yes, it is. It oh, wow. It's a drawing by uh, Michael, a guy named Michael Cho, who's a graphic novelist who I publish. I love, I love this too. Look, it's missing <laughs> on that right, side, yeah, no, right? Yeah. Well, you sort yeah, of, right, you yeah. sort of, you deconstruct it by opening it up. But the, yeah, the, the level of complexity, like this is art. Like you can stare at it and study it. And the for other a book too, time. with the soft pages and everything, yeah. and the way it's made, that you can go through and look at the covers real fast, and something will catch your eye. And it's an experience. Yes, I do, you know, I do think you. a book should be an experience, and I think I think the cover is actually the first page. That's the other thing. The first page of the experience is the, the book cover. The first page of the book, yes. It's a good way to think of That's it. The, that, that is your introduction to... So the, the cover definitely has to tie into the book, and, and there cannot be a disconnect between what you're saying on, showing or saying on that cover to what they're about to experience. Right, although often there is a disconnect. Yes, but ideally you don't want it to be. No. Yeah, but he put the dog again in the inside of mine. So when he designed Absolutely. the fonts and the, the layout, mm -hmm. it's in there a couple more times. 
so it's a you know it's a yeah. anchor that sure that, or a thread i guess you would say that runs through it is that how you would explain it Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it should look like it's all integrated and it all belongs together. And um, yeah. So in the publishing business, and one thing that that struck me as odd when we were talking is you were like, kind of like a little confused that I didn't, that I loved it and I didn't want any changes. And then I I was following your direction because I figured if you're, well, first of all, I loved it. So I couldn't imagine what I would change about it because I think it's perfect. We're also fans of yours. Yeah. <laughs> but it's odd to me in a, in a world today, like most people would then take that cover and then they would ask 20 friends that don't even read books. Mm. And then they would come back to you and they go, well, Chip, I think the, um, you know, maybe it should be a German shepherd and the font. I don't know. Should it be bigger? And my name should be big. How many people want their name bigger? Is no, that a big they, thing? They, they all want their name bigger. Yeah. And the subtitle should be bigger. And then, and you know, and so it, it's how much, how much of a frustration and in in, of a miss is it to use focus groups as the only way of driving things? Well, this may be anathema to you guys, right. but we use no focus groups at all. Really? Ever. No. And I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but a focus group of your friends, like well, opinions, that sort well, of that thing. That you can't. You ever test them online, the covers? One cover to the X to see which one people. Uh, I don't. By the way, Chip just gave the biggest eye roll when Mike asked that. <laughs> that you can't hear. Yeah. Um, um, we don't do it, but authors do it. Yeah. And we had an extremely high profile author mm. <clears throat> who works for Facebook. <clears throat> <laughs> and she. And she? She. Um, oh, well, now, now we know who it is. Yeah. She, she did all of this um, crowd. What are they? Crowdsourcing. Crowdfunding or sourcing? Yeah. Not funding. Okay, sourcing. Didn't need the funding. Um, but crowdsourcing on the cover. And it was just difficult. Because, again, like you're overthinking it. You're overthinking it. And, it, and you know, this is, this is how bad art and design is made. By, by asking a thousand people's opinions. Because... They're not going to agree on anything. And then that's going to put doubt in your mind. And anyway, well, I, I liken it to the, the Apple thing, right? Like St Steve Jobs always said, like, they'll know they want it when they get it. And I think like one of the geniuses of Apple and one of the geniuses of chip is this is oddly simple. Like I couldn't in a million years make something that clean and simple. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that, that's and, yes, you could. I mean, I'm telling you, well, I showed you some stuff that I do. It's like very busy and I don't know. I'm trying to put too much. I'm not at that. I'm, I'm, I don't have that clarity yet that you, that you have of, I know it when I see it, but I, it's hard for me to achieve. I always keep adding more. Even when I paint, I get, I like go too far when I should have stopped. Well, you were saying like, what were the rules in school? There weren't many, but one of them was from I had two two really really strong teachers in college and and they were brutal um but one of the one of the rules was okay you've got a bunch of elements on your cover um and if you're not sure it's working like we'll take one off do you miss it no take another one off oh interesting do you miss that no and then you keep going until and I and the second the second TED talk I did, because I've done two books on um, Charles Schultz and Peanuts, and he was the master of that, of reducing human emotion and inner lives to six little squiggles, uh, as opposed to cartoonists before him who were, were brilliant, but, but were like overly or, ornate. Um, so when his work came out in the 50s, it was a shock like people but it it directly engaged with the with the viewer um because there was less information bombarding them it's like no you're sad that's how you feel that's how this character feels you empathize with that character because these two lines are above his eyes now are going up 
and his and he's got a frown period like what else do you need um so i mean it was like the birth of the emoji or whatever but this is like 1950 and charlie brown and Lucy, what did you show him your your design of the blends? Oh, uh, yeah, saw them earlier. Yeah. What yeah. did you um? Can we can we have one really quick? What did you think of of that? Like Mike worked so hard on that. The so there's seven different experiences, right? right? So one is like morning motivator, and so Mike is great at going through the whole process of your day. But you need like basically the way Mike has set this up is you got to smoke seven of these a day to get through. <laughs> oh, four, so you, four, four, and then. The, Three so you got morning motivator. Then what happens? I, I, I got morning motivator, creative kingdom. So if you're working, you're uh, making so a book a cover. Creative. You can smoke a little bit and still be able to uh, function and do your do your job. Then there's mellow me uh, when you're done for work. And no, no. Then you got chill. pain tamer. So after your no, workout, no, 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 no. Then you got mellow me, and then you got dank dream. So those are the four that get you through the day. And then, right there's dank dreams if you go to go sleep. And then we have uh, hell's bells if you want to party. And then uh, central sensations. Oh yeah, so if you want to get a little horny, sex. you have central sensation. Then you sensations. need the pain tamer because you hopefully you had a really good time with this central sensation. Okay, but open one up, Chip. Like Mike redid these, so he made a bunch of them and threw them all away because he didn't like the plastic and the way it felt. Like he is so <laughs> he's got such an attention to detail and the amount of time he spent on and once again, I'm apologizing if you're listening to the show. You're going to want to go to YouTube and watch this episode, I think. It's, it's childproof, so you got to kind of take the top off. It's got a rubber top. The rubber end is the, the top there. But then that okay. that little cylinder, the should texture of it. Now, should I keep going? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. If you want, open it up. Experience the whole thing. So the texture of it and how it feels in your hands. And then, you know, because this is a would be classified as a, you know, high end pre-roll yes. then you can put it back in there and you know you don't have to experience it all in one one sitting and the little rubber top you can put it out with oh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so and it's funny all this stuff that i understand about this oh, chip don't, and don't i don't take smoke. the whole thing off just the top and then the joints there just take the rubber okay. top off all and right. the joints in there yeah i let him experience how he wants I to should, i should say Excuse me. just in, in the interest of full disclosure <laughs> yes and I told you guys this yeah. before, but I've never smoked a joint in my life. It's your 60th birthday six years from now? Six You're considering it? I am considering you it. You and I will get together then. I would like All that. right. Because I need instruction because I'll, oh. end up, I'll end up in a dumpster somewhere. No, no. We, will, we don't want that. No, I, I do no, not want And that. we're not going to allow that to happen. Okay. You take it out. You can feel it, touch it. You're not going to get high. And then You're if you get... look back in that cylinder, it's tapered. It's tapered. So it holds the. So I mean, the, the okay. attention to detail to this. I mean, I was so proud of Mike, and I think. Well, he's like, no, no, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Somebody the slipped to the lighter, but. <laughs> my, <laughs> my sponsor's going to be angry uh, at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is beautiful. Um, um, but you were saying like books are different than food that are different. You know, the packaging is yes. different. Now, but, but, um, the one thing I'm going to say, and this is going to sound. There, there's a mistake on there that I'm, I'm going to fix that I, I caught, but go ahead. Well, I, just in general, and this is going to sound very snobby on my part, but like what, what I really love about book covers, and especially I should um, clarify my particular job mostly is to design covers for uh, hardcover, the first edition of a hardcover okay. book. Okay. Okay. I've designed paperbacks. And, and what's the difference between the two? Well, a lot because, well, f formally, you know, the hard, the hardcover is, is right. he heavy board and it gets a, usually gets a jacket on it. And it's, and it's the way the book is first, frankly, introduced to the world. Both of your covers have texture to it with the covers. Well, this has texture no the because texture it, because this texture is right, different than this one right, and right, same right, thing right. with it, that yes, one yes so you have a matte and gloss yeah. thing going on there um but the 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 thing with hardcover books and the jackets for hardcover books is that they are meant to be kept okay all right uh you might give it away you might give it to the goodwill or the, but you're not gonna throw it away and i know this is unavoidable but i think with with packaging for a what you would call a consumable most likely this will get tossed yes um and so that's i what am i trying to say it's like for me it's like a psychological difference between designing something that will get thrown away and hopefully designing something that's that going to be that, hung on to hung on to sure 
uh, and that and that informs all different kinds of decisions about does something look too trendy? Does this look like, you know, oh, that's so 2003 or whatever. And whereas I think with stuff like this, you want to make it. Well, I want I want but, them to grab it and pick it up. Yes, yeah. but you don't. Want, you, but it's not designed to throw away. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, no. The the, the, the outside wrapper is, but the, right. the tube when you but leave even it on the there outside stuff, wrapper that, doesn't feel like something you'd want to. You throw can hold away. that for your next joint. Do you feel right. that, Chip? Well, but I feel. But I've already had to. Yeah. You've had to tear I've it. I've had to destroy it. Yeah. Um, and so, so psychologically, did it bother you destroying it? A little bit. Interesting. I, I guess. A, well, that's a bit, it's fascinating, I, I, bro, is, that he thinks is, that way because he thinks it's, like it's different. he's like thinking like he wants somebody to keep something on a shelf forever and 100 years from now, somebody pulls it out and it tells them the story, right? Right. And this is something that is thrown away. And so if you were to design something like that, that what the wrapper was going to be thrown away, how does it change your approach? Or well, you just wouldn't because you couldn't get behind it. Well, I, again, like I and I, I couldn't tell you the last or if a piece of packaging I have designed that's that's not meant to be kept. I can't even think of yeah. anything. It's, so in that sense, I'm I'm like the worst person to ask. Um, but it's I, a fascinating. I have, I have, it's, have, no, it's, it's a fascinating, fascinating observation. It's, no, it's, it really it's is part of your makeup. But a best, uh, one of my best friends founded this incredible branding firm called Sterling Brands, and her name is Debbie Millman, and she should be sitting next. Or you should have her on your show because because okay. she did, she does do packaging, and she's an artist, and she's brilliant, and she would give you a whole analysis on this that would be yep. much more valuable than than I would. Like all I could do is. Like when I, when we were in the other room and I saw all of these in, in a bag, I thought they were very, you know, to use a horrible, stupid cliche, I thought they were very eye catching. All right. I'm like, that looks cool. Um, and, and I, and I'm starting to get like a visual handle on you yeah. and I think that's fine. Um, I would have no idea what's inside there. Yeah. None. Zero. Um, okay, there's a little pot leaf, but I don't know. You know, um, so that may be good. That may be bad. Well, yeah, they're only sold in dispensaries, so people know that Already they're in there to them. buy it, right? Right. Okay. Well, then you know that's at a the whole, present moment. Yeah. That's a whole other thing. Context. Yeah. So you're you're really talking <laughs> about the, the 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 retail environment and and being but a cannabis a retail environment where people are going into. With, Same into thing with, a with place books. where only that is sold. Amazon versus a bookstore, mm -hmm. and you got to make a cover. Right. So how I, do you how do you deal with those, that diversity? Because when thought? I first started in the bus, bid, 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 business, of course yeah. there was no Amazon, and so sure. I was constantly going into bookstores to see how to see what other people were doing, and also to see what my stuff looked like in the context of the other books. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some of that on Amazon because your your book is being lined up against other ones, especially like oh, if you like this, we recommend X. Um, but uh, it, that was a much more prevalent thing about you had very little control over how your work was going to be displayed. But if I'm but okay, if I'm going into a dispensary, I'm going in for one reason. So now it doesn't matter if I if it doesn't say mm -hmm. what's in it on on here. Um, so who designed this? Oh, uh, a design firm. And we, I went through a lot of renditions and moved some stuff around. There's a major mistake on there. I'll, just hand me one and I'll show you what it is. I already corrected it, but on these ones, they haven't been corrected. If you look here, Big Mike's Blends needs to be switched with Mellow Me. Because whenever someone's looking for this, they're not looking for Mellow Me. They're looking for the brand. Well, and, 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 and so the brand has to be moved on the top and then... If you look at any packaging, all the, the information is down in the bottom third of the thing. Yes. And that's the big mistake. And, and that brings us to um, the idea, and, and this is, applies to yep. uh, book covers too, which is what I would call um, <clears throat> a visual hierarchy. Oh, let's talk about that. Well, okay. what, what do you want me to see first? Uh, right. So what do you want them to see first in a book, like a cover? What's the most important thing that they're going to see? And it's sitting there on the shelf or it's sitting there in Amazon. Again, How are you going to? All depends on the book. So going back to Pet the Dog, uh, just by, by 
process of elimination, you're going to see the dog's eye first. You just are. Mm. Eyes engage with people. It's the window to the soul. And so, that's the top third of the book. It's the top third of the book. And, you know, things in our culture go from left to right, top to bottom. Mm. So um, I'll be honest. Like, So I make a, de a decision, whether it's an editorial decision or design decision or a packaging decision, that we're not going to put Chris Collins at the top because, frankly, a lot of people aren't going to know who you are. Right. It's, but petting the dog, everybody can relate to that. So you hit the dog's eye and then you ricochet and then you start up because you go top to bottom. Interesting. So, and which is exactly why. So the eye, you're, you're the, the eye's the hook. The eye's the hook yeah. the, and the dog's the hook and then the message is the hook and, mm. and, then, and then the subtitle, the lost art of customer service, mm -hmm. that closes the loop. It's like, sure. ah, that's what it's about. And then, oh, by the way, it's by this guy. What's the strongest subtitle you ever you ever saw? That's, if there's one that sticks out in your mind, because I'm having problems with my book. Obviously, you see the one yeah, we gave yes. you. It was like, well, no, no, we can't have that's way too long. We got to synthesize that sucker down. Well, what I was talking to yep. Chris about because yep. he sent me a whole bunch of subtitles. Oh, we, and some that I was in love with, bro. I thought for sure he's gonna pick this one, and he he went with the simplest one. Well, we, I think, we still have to what, work on it. What? Yeah, I mean, what happens is um, a lot of authors and publishers again. All books are different. It all depends on what the book is, but usually they'll have um, a title that doesn't really have much to do with um, what the book's actually about. It's like an abstract thing. Like now, again, going back to Malcolm Gladwell, we all know now what a tipping point is. Yes. But at the time when it first comes out, it's like, what is that? He has to educate you what it is. He has to educate you on what that means. And I don't even remember what the what the subtitle was on that. But whatever it was, it was like, oh, okay. And then you see a match, and it's like, all right. But but, but going back to Jurassic Park, yeah. uh, we're talking. You know, it was like 1989 when I had to design that. It's coming out in 1990. Who knows what a Jurassic is? Nobody. That's true. Nobody. So uh, so you have what is frankly an extremely abstract title and then then you have to make it mean something um and so, so it's the, like, the dinosaur had right those people in now yeah. let let's just say and this would not be the case but if if because michael Crichton is so smart but if it was called dinosaur park mm -hmm. then you can do something else visually because you've already filled in that blank in but the reader nobody mind. knows what jurassic is but nobody knows what jurassic to fill in the black so you yeah. have to i thought okay we have to show a design a dinosaur but um as a, as a nerdy kid who loved dinosaurs and made dinosaur models and all this kind of stuff it's like well we kind of know what they look like so what if it was a symbol for what one might look like if you because they're generating these animals in in the story so what if it was in the halfway point from being a, a skeleton into a real thing and that's what that's really about and oh. then and then you've got all the pointy visual cues of the teeth and the ribs and it looks really it looks really dangerous the tipping point is how little things can make a big difference with and, a match and that's kind of enigmatic too if you think about it but it works.